All right, hey, my construction entrepreneurs, Tyrone Jones here with the Construction Entrepreneur School of Services. Hey, on this one here, I want to talk about bonding, right? Now, there's two types of bonds I'm going to be talking about in this class here, okay? One is the, is the 5K bond, right, that you have to get because of the CSLB, right? Uh, that's one bond, and I'm, I'm going to be referencing a second bond here. We're going to be talking about two bonds. The other one is what we refer to as being bondable, okay? Okay, this one's being bondable, but this one here is for any dollar amount, okay? And this one here covers projects, okay? So this one covers projects when you're bondable. This one here, the 15K bond, is what the CSLB requires you to have, okay? Now the CSLB requires you to have because that's their insurance on you as a contractor. So if you don't meet your obligations as a contractor, they can actually pull from this $15,000 bond to pay a number of things. If you don't pay subcontractors, if you walk out on a project when you're not supposed to, uh, they can hold on there. It's one of the guys called. Um, if you walk out on a project when you're not supposed to, if you uh, don't pay subcontractors and they actually file a claim on your bond, they can pay out on that. That's why the bond, that's why this bond is here. Okay. Um, another thing is that I, I want to point out while we're on this this 15k bond that you're required to have once you get your license um, is that this bond is not to be advertised. It's actually illegal to advertise that bond. So a lot of times we're putting on our business cards, license, bonded, and insured, okay? The license and insured part you can put, but when you're saying that you're bonded, actually the, 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 the CSLB board require, uh, requires you not to post that you're bonded under this bond here. Okay, now if you have this bond, if you're bondable, no one advertises that they're bondable, okay? Usually that's uh, under your, your letterhead, your, your statement of qualifications, okay? Uh, use this in um, uh, different uh, bid information that's being passed back and forth. Because once you talk about being bondable, usually they wanna know the dollar amount that you're bondable by, okay? so. That's the way that goes there, okay? So the $15,000 um, the fifteen thousand dollar bond is required by the CSLB and you must, you must have this. And you're not supposed to advertise it as a contractor, clear on that. Okay, bondable here for projects, okay? Now, when I first, when I first became bondable um, is when I first started looking at doing public works projects. Okay, um, a lot of public works projects above a certain threshold, each city, each county, each state has different thresholds, uh, requires that project to be bondable. Okay, now what does that mean to be bondable? Now to be bondable means that you are covering this project under certain type of surety bonds. Okay, now usually this falls under Let's say uh, you're going for a project, right? A commercial project, a public works project. Most times they will require you to do a bid bond, a uh, payment, payment bond, and a performance bond. Okay, they require you to do three bonds. Now, on now this is for public works 
This is for uh, Davis Bacon projects, commercial projects sometimes. The owner or the uh, general contractor wants you to get a bond for that particular project, okay? Now, you can also have to bond a residential project, especially if you're working on a large project, you know, two million, five million, eight million, they're definitely go gonna require all contractors to be bondable. Why? Because they want, they want this security that each of these bonds cover for these projects, okay? The bid bond, the bid bond for public works, commercial type projects, and some residential projects will probably range anywhere from five to 10%, okay? That's on average, that's what you normally see out on projects, okay? Now, that means that that bid bond needs to be an amount of 5% or 10% of your contract value, okay? We're talking about your contract dollars, okay? Your total contract value, that's what that needs to be in the amount of 10% of the contract, okay? So basically, what that means there on most public works projects is that if you turn in a low bid to the point where you are selected to do that project and you decide, hey, I don't want to do this project, I missed a few things there, I made an error, or I purposely tried to go low, but now I don't want to honor the bid. But they can actually take 10% of that contract value and use that money to get the next person in line, okay? Now that 10% that, that, that could be a large amount depending on your contract value, right? But they would literally, by law, they can keep 10% of that free and clear to actually go and get, to try to cover the cost between the gap of you and the second contractor, the second lowest bidder, okay? They wanna to try to cover that gap there and they want to bring on the next lowest bidder of that project, okay? Now, that when, when, you, when, you, when you write up this 10%, right? That 10% is, is, is going for the, the lowest bidder. Back in the day, I'm gonna tell you this, back in the day, contractors, uh, uh, some contractors uh, used to play a game to where they're purposely turning low bids and recoup some of the costs that they discounted on extras. Now, um, I don't fully know how they recoup some of the costs unless they were overcharging for extras um, on, on projects, but that was the name of the game. You, you get in low and then you get extras and then you make up for a lot of costs by charging four different things that, uh, that, that, may, not, um, that may not constitute as an extra, okay? And, and that was the game they were playing. So nowadays, um, you know, you definitely don't want to do that because you definitely can lose that 10% if you decide to walk away from that project if you are the lowest bidder, okay? All right, next. Uh, once you get the job, right? Once you get the job, that, that bid bond is done, okay? Now they say, hey, you have been awarded. You receive your, 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 your PO or whatever it is. They're going to require you to now acquire the payment bond and a performance bond next, okay? This one is 10%, this one is 100%, and this one is 100%, okay? Both of these are 100%. Now the payment bond will, 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 will basically cover anything that you do not pay on material suppliers, employees, uh, uh, vendors. If you fail to meet your obligations to make payment to them, and they file a lien, they file some type of notice, they contact the owners or the lenders of the project, then uh, if they cannot resolve that, they can actually go after that payment bond, okay, to make sure that payment bond is covered, okay, that, that, that those, uh, those debts are covered that you failed to meet, okay. Next, the performance bond. They're going to require you to get the 100% performance bond. The performance is going to uh, cover uh, whether you complete the projects. Uh, uh, sometimes it covers workmanship, okay? So if you walk out and abandon this project, they can actually pull that performance bond to cover the rest of that project that you did not complete, that you're obligated to complete, okay? Now, let's talk about costs, because we talked about 
what those bonds cover already. Let's talk about costs, okay? What does this bond cost? How much could you pay for this bond here, okay? So, usually to get this bond, you have to fill out an application, okay? You can go to our website, okay? You can follow the links below. We have a bond link to where you can actually see how much you're bondable by. Uh, so you can see if you want to start doing uh, a public works, commercial, or large residential projects, okay? Uh, so check that out. Go to our website or click the link below in the description, and that leads you to a form that you can fill out, and then we'll connect you with our insurance broker so we can find out how much that you're bondable by, okay? All right, so next, uh, to get this bond, you fill out an application, usually it's a fast track um, application, and uh, they require information from you, okay? Um, uh, uh, this, th this bond initially doesn't cost anything to find out if you're bondable. It doesn't cost anything. It should not cost you anything, let me say that, um, to find out if you're bondable, okay? So the cost to find out your, if you're bondable, okay, is zero dollars. Remember that. It should not, no one should be charging you to find out if you're bondable. Okay, it should not cost you bondable. But the cost once you get a project, okay, there's a several costs associated once you get a project, okay? The first cost, once you submit for a bid, remember, you gotta do the bid bond, right? Once you do the bid bond, this is you trying to get the job, okay? Once you find out you're bondable, how much you're bondable by, you go for that project, you submit a bid bond, the bid bond is usually five to 10%. That bid bond in the beginning, okay, in the beginning of the relationship with the surety buying company may cost you $25. It may cost you $100, depending on the size of the job, okay? Most times during the beginning of that, if you're just starting out doing that, you're going to pay for your bid bonds. When I first was going after public works projects, it cost me a lot of money because I had to pay for this bid bond. It cost me $25, okay? Uh, on each bid that I did, whether if I got the bid or not, I had to pay $25 just to receive that bid bond, okay? And that bid bond had to be attached to the bid when you submit it. So I had to pay $25. So you have to find out what is the cost that is initially gonna cost me in the beginning of this bid bond and this bondable process, okay? You may get lucky and just pay zero cost for your, your, your bid bond, but I tell you this, after you start working with that, uh, that surety buying company for a while, you're going to pay this. If you start doing projects, being successful at them, you got no claims, eventually they're gonna be making their money on that payment bond and performance bonds once you land that project. So they're gonna actually zip that out. And that's what happened to me. I started landing projects, started getting uh, uh, more work, being successful at it, no complaints, no claims, and my bed buying costs went to zero which then had me bidding on more projects, right? Because I didn't have to count those extra funds toward that bid bond. So once you get, once you get the job, right? You submit that bid bond, they're gonna require you to get a, a payment and performance bond. Now, usually in the beginning, okay? Your bid, your, your performance bond, your payment bond to get this total package is about 3%, okay? But remember, that 3% is in the bid Oops. cost, okay? Remember, that 3%, that 3% of the bid, that the 3% of that buying cost is in the bid. You're not paying that out of pocket. You should include that in your bid. Okay, that's the thing, that's what you're supposed to do. If the project requires you to be bondable, and, but see, this is the goal here. This is how you get more competitive. You get that percentage down to two and to one. That's what you want to do. You want to get that percentage down after you start doing more projects, building more relationships, showing that you're successful, building a relationship with that surety buying company, and they start releasing that percentage down and down and down, okay? And that's how you become more, more, more competitive on bondable projects. So you'll pay 3%. Now, listen. This is, this is the key here, okay? That 3% is due when you call for that, that payment and performance bond. It's due, okay? So 
once you once you call for that payment and performance bond, you need to come out of the pocket that three percent and pay that bonding company so they can actually create your payment and uh, performance bond so you can give that to your customer. Okay, so once you once you pay them, remember this is a nugget here. Once you get once you pay them and you receive your PO, your your intent to 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 commence whatever that letter is to say that you can start your project. The first invoice you do is for this cost. That's the first invoice you do is for that 3%. You're entitled to get that back. That's the first thing you have spent out on that project. So that's the first thing before you even send a crew member out there, before you pick up materials, your invoice needs to be in the mail, emailed, dropped off for the 3% so you can recoup that cost back. Do not wait on your bond to be, your bond costs, do not wait to get that money back. You're entitled to it as soon as you get the commencement letter, okay? So, um, 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 like I said, filling out the bond, it's an application. You figure out, you, figure, you, you find out how much you're bondable by. Now, the goal with this is, is say, I was bondable by, um, 50k right when I first um, got on board I was bundled by 50k so that means that I can't do 10 50k projects no no I'm only bundled by 50k that means that I can do as many projects as I want as long as the total value of all combined projects doesn't exceed 50k okay so I can do any bondable project as long as the total value of all projects that I have, uh, that I've been awarded with does not exceed the 50K. And then over time, that amount goes up to 150, 300, 400, 800, a mil, okay? Then you can start really playing with the big boys, all right? So remember that, you, you cannot cover that. So this bondable, this bond here is not the same as this bond here. Two different bonds here, okay? Two different bonds here. And uh, as you start going out to more projects, make sure you come back and look at this video and reach out to us if you got to reach out to us if you have any more questions when dealing with uh, uh, bonds and uh, becoming bondable and uh, uh, looking to get um, looking to land projects where they require you to uh, produce a bid bond, performance bond, and payment bond. Hey, that's all I have for you. Okay. Make sure that you uh, check out the rest of the channel, subscribe, like, share this, especially for the ones that are out there looking to get into jobs that require binding, helpful information here. And uh, my construction entrepreneurs, hustle hard, then hustle harder. Check you out on the next one.